Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're in continuing to investigate the concept of ANOVA, or analysis of variance, and advancing to two-way analysis of variance, which is a statistical test to determine whether separate categorical variables, as well as their interactions, have an impact on your dependent variable. And here, just as a reminder, we have got 200 pumpkins recording their weight, their variety, we have got pumpkins of four different varieties, and fertilizers that we use to grow those pumpkins. And we've got three different fertilizers. In the previous video, we have determined using one-way ANOVA or Levine's test that pumpkin variety does indeed matter for pumpkin weight, with giant variety pumpkins being notably larger, and the result of a heterogeneity test across those four groups has showed an overwhelmingly significant result, have statistics significant at 1%, whereas the fertilizer used to grow pumpkins was not found to be statistically significant in determining pumpkin weights, with the F statistic we obtained from one-way ANOVA being insignificant at any conventional confidence interval. However, that might not be the end of the story, because not only individual pumpkin varieties and uh, fertilizers used to grow them can affect pumpkin weights, the interactions between the two can also matter. Because, for example, a particular fertilizer can be more conducive in increasing the yield for a particular pumpkin variety. This would not be captured in one-way analysis. For this, we'll need to record average weights across both variety and fertilizer. So instead of analyzing four groups or three groups, as in one-way ANOVA, we'll need to build either a 4x3 contingency table and analyze 12 different subgroups broken down by both variety and weight, or calculate the averages across both groups in a separate column. So let's do the first method um, and calculate the average ifs. So we use an average ifs here instead of average if, as we are uh, here interested in two conditions at the same time, we'll plug in our average range, which is the column with pumpkin weights. Now we specify the first condition, which is that the variety of the pumpkin needs to match the variety of this particular observation, and the fertilizer used to grow this pumpkin needs to be the same as the fertilizer of this particular observation. And that allows us to calculate the uh, averages across all 12 potential combinations of variety and fertilizer for our pumpkin. That would allow us to calculate the variability both across individual factors of pumpkin weight. Uh, Two-way ANOVA is often cited as uh, the introduction to factor analysis where you evaluate how different categorical variables affect the outcome variable of interest. So we'll be able to see how variety and fertilizer of pumpkins affect their weights separately, how both of them and their interaction affect the weight of the pumpkin, and from there we'll be able to deduce what is the interaction effect between variety and fertilizer, or generally what is the interaction effect between those two factors. So for the total explained variability of our uh, two factors, we can calculate the sum of squared deviations of those specific uh, averages, which are uh, varied both across variety and fertilizer, and uh, the global average, which is recorded in the column to the left. We square those and calculate that overall, those two factors and their interaction explains uh, 2006 variability units. Those would be squared kilograms. So the number is not particularly meaningful on its own. It's meaningful when you compare it to the residual variability. 
the individual factor variability can be easily calculated using the uh, averages across uh, individual factors. So for variety, we sum the average across variety groups, subtract the global average and square it. And for the fertilizer factor, we can sum the uh, averages across fertilizer groups, subtract the global average, square and sum it. And we can see that if those two uh, factor variabilities are summed together, they do not arrive at the total explained variability. This is because some of the variability that is explained by varying both is due to interaction effects. And that means that the interaction variability can be calculated as explained variability that can be explained by uh, altering either of the two factors minus variability explained by individual factors on their own. And that allows us to arrive at the interaction effect. So we can see that the interaction between var variety and fertilizer explains 413 units. To evaluate the statistical significance of the explanatory power uh, of this particular interaction effect, we need to know the residual variability that is left unexplained. For that, we can either calculate the total variability and subtract the explained, that would also work, or we can sum the differences between our raw data, just individual observations, the averages across both factors squared. That arrives at 6614 units of variability. And for the total variability, as usual, we sum the differences between individual weights and the global or overall sample mean, square it, and sum it. And just to double check, we can see that those two expressions, the explained variability and the residual variability, do add up to the total variability, which means that we haven't made any mistakes. It's always good to uh, check the soundness of your calculations this way. Now, for individual degrees of freedom for each particular test, because we care to evaluate whether individual factors matter on their own, whether the interaction matters, whether the overall model uh, has explanatory power over the pumpkin weight, we can calculate the respective degrees of freedom. Well, for the variety factor, we need to subtract one from the number of groups based on this particular factor. Again, this is due to the fact that um, any pumpkin can move from any variety group into every single other variety group, hence minus one. For fertilizer, we need to subtract one from the number of fertilizer groups, resulting in two degrees of freedom, again, because the number of groups based on this factor is smaller, quite naturally. The total uh, degrees of freedom for uh, all uh, potential combinations of variety and fertilizer is the number of groups based on variety times the number of groups based on fertilizer and minus one, because there are overall 12 groups if we alter or if we're allowed to alter uh, either of those two factors and minus one for the same reason. And the remaining degrees of freedom are due to the interactions. Again, we could simply subtract 3 and 2 from 11. That would result in the degrees of freedom for the interaction effect being equal to 6. Or, which is equivalent, we can multiply the degrees of freedom for variety and fertilizer, so for individual factors, resulting in 6 degrees of freedom as well. Now, for the total degrees of freedom, it is obviously just equal to the sample size. And the residual degrees of freedom are the total minus the degrees of freedom of the overall model, resulting in 189 degrees of freedom for the residual. And now we can use uh, F tests to calculate the F statistics for each of those tests and evaluate their statistical significance in a very straightforward way. So for the F statistic, we need to first adjust the uh, explained or here, the generalization of between group variability, which would be the variability that can be attributable to this particular factor or interaction divided by the respective number of the degrees of freedom. And in the denominator, we would always have the residual divided by the residual degrees of freedom. 
Hence, I'm locking those cells. And that allows us to calculate all four F statistics for all four tests of our interest. And for the p-values, we can use the right-tailed F distribution, plugging in the F statistics, the degrees of freedom for this particular model, and the degrees of freedom for the residual. Dragging it across, we can see that the variety does indeed matter overwhelmingly, supporting the results of one way ANOVA. The fertilizer does not uh, matter that much. Again, the p-value uh, is greater than any uh, conventional confidence uh, threshold, greater than 10%, for instance. So fertilizer on its own does not alter pumpkin weights as per our uh, testing results. However, the interaction does significantly affect pumpkin weight, which means that for some varieties of pumpkins, some fertilizers perform substantially better or substantially worse. And also we can see that the overall model still is overwhelmingly significant, reinforcing the reliability of our analysis. However, this uh, does not necessarily allow us to see what the interaction effects are, or at least do not interpret them directly. So I would suggest to also go for the second approach that I'll show now, which would be to build the contingency table and calculate the variability this way. So for the uh, averages across any combination of variability and fertilizer, we can as well use average ifs, refer to the column of weights and locking it across. Then we can refer to the column of varieties and refer to the uh, element of the contingency table that refers to a particular variety and lock in the column, as we do want it to change it or drag it down, but not as we drag it across. For the second condition of our average ifs, we we'll refer to the fertilizer column and the element that signifies the fertilizer used in the contingency table. And here, for very similar reason, we lock the row and not the column, as we do want it to change or drag it across, but not as we drag it down. And that would allow us to calculate all elements of the contingency table. We can see here that the most um, stalking differences are for the squash variety of the pumpkin. Phosphates work, seem to work best for it, yielding a very impressive weight, whereas nitrogen um, fertilizers in particular result in much lower yields, much lower weight of the pumpkin of the squash variety. Whereas for other pumpkins, we do not see, at least um, visually, much of an interaction effect here. So this is why um, this sort of um, visualization or illustration of your data can be helpful in later on interpreting your test results. Because ultimately this p-value only shows you that uh, there is some interaction effect but does not tell you where it came from. Now, to finalize our calculation using the second method, we can also use the count ifs function. And here I would take a shortcut and just copy this formula across, change respective cell references, avoid referring to the weight because we no longer need it as we're just counting the observations, and then change the function to count ifs, allowing us to calculate how many uh, observations there are in each of those 12 uh, groups. And now for the uh, evaluation of uh, explained variability using the continuous table method, we can sum the deviations of those group averages from the total average, square it and times it by the individual subgroup observations, close the parentheses and sum them all together, yielding exactly the same result as previously. And ultimately, we could have built uh, the same testing framework for two-way ANOVA without having to perform those cumbersome calculations. We could have used the second method for the variety and fertilizer individual factor analysis, individual uh, ANOVAs, and use uh, these results further on. So for example, we would have referred to the uh, between group variability here for our variety factor, for the fertilizer factor, would have referred to the uh, between group variability for fertilizer. We would have arrived at exactly the same uh, interaction factor over here, and that would have also worked for all intents and purposes 
in terms of our two-way analysis of variance testing. And that's all there is in terms of determining the interaction effects between categorical variables using two-way ANOVA. This is generalizable to any number of categorical variables, provided that you have enough sample size. Here, we already uh, scratch uh, the surface, simply because uh, our F-testing does um, assume normality. And here we have got a relatively small number of observations in every single group. So uh, you could approach the results with a pinch of salt, simply because you need, uh, again, as per the rule of thumb, more than 30 observations in each particular group to uh, uh, assume normality as per the central limit theorem. Uh, however, uh, if you have got a large enough sample, you could break it down into three-dimensional, four-dimensional, as the sky's the limit, um, continuity tables, and uh, perform uh, three-way or four-way ANOVA, just like here. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos that you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.